Lesson 6.2 is dot products of vectors. So we're going to learn how to do something called the dot products. We're going to, uh, you know, look at a few applications of that. And so really just continue working with our vectors. So um, dot product of vectors, if you look there at the first line, the dot product of vectors, u equals, if u equals u1, u2, and v has components v1, v2, then, in order to do the dot product, notice what it says. U dot V, or in other words, U times V, is U1, V1, plus U2, V2. Okay, so that is how we're going to find a dot product. Before today, when we've multiplied, we've only done scalar multiplication, where we've just taken the vector and multiplied by a single number, kind of like distributed in. But today we're looking, okay, how do we multiply two vectors? So first component of one times first component of the other plus second component of one times second component of the other. Realize when you do the dot product, it's just going to work out to be a number. It's no longer going to be a vector when we're multiplying them. It's just going to work out to be a number. And so we will have lots of practice with the dot product today. You guys will be pros by the time we're done. Um, before we get into that practice, though, there's a few properties. It says these properties are true of dot products. Majority of these are properties that you're familiar with in terms of just regular math, and they just carry over to dot products. For example, u times v is equal to v times u. You probably don't remember the name, but that's a commutative property that you guys have been using since, I don't know, elementary school, I think, is when you officially first learned it. I was shocked when Logan or Natalie was working. I think it was Natalie was working on something like a year or two ago. No, she's fifth grade. And I'm like, wait, you guys learned commutative property that long ago? I didn't realize that. So, but yet I still reteach it to you guys here as juniors and seniors. But okay, so commutative property. Um, two, this is the one that we are going to use more than anything. And that just says, when you multiply a vector times itself, so u, u dot u, it's going to be the absolute value of u quantity squared. And if you recall, what do you remember about the absolute value of a vector? Okay, we call it the length or magnitude. I know, it's been like a week, but if you flip back to lesson 6.1, we talked about something called the length or magnitude of a vector. And when we did that, we used absolute value symbols to talk about it. Um, the others, again, they pretty much go with things you know. The zero times a vector is going to be zero. Um, number four there, u times v plus w. It can also be done as u dot v plus u dot w. That's kind of your distributive property. Five is the reverse distributive property, where it's u plus v times w or dot w. So you can multiply the w back in. And then 6, if c is a constant, right, a scalar, so cu times v, well, basically, we've got our associative property going here. We've got three pieces. You can multiply them in any order. And so, um, again, those are just some properties of dot products. So let's try example one. Find each dot product. Vector 3, comma 4 times vector 5, comma 2. Okay, remember these vectors? If we go up on the basic form, these vectors are like saying u1, u2, and v1, comma v2. That's what you're multiplying there. So according to our rule up above, how are we going to multiply these vectors? Okay, u1, v1 plus u2, v2. So what's my u1, v1? So 3 times 5 plus u2, v2. 4 times 2. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 2 is 8, 15 plus 8 is 
23. Okay, let's try B. Wait, are we okay with A? Wasn't bad, was it? Okay. 1, comma, negative 2, and the vector negative 4, comma, 3. How do we find the dot product there? Okay. So the first two we're multiplying are 1 times negative 4 plus negative 2 times 3. So 1 times negative 4 plus negative 2 times 3. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 2 times 3, negative 6, negative 4 plus negative 6, negative 10. So barring no careless mistakes, that should have been okay? What about C? If you recall, when we first learned component form back in Lesson 6-1, we also learned something called a linear combination form. That's what it was when it involved the I's and the J's. So here we're being asked to find the product between 2I minus J and 3I minus 5J. We want to think dot product here. What do you know about 2I minus J? Yeah, 2i minus j is the linear combination of, and the component form is 2, negative 1. And so you've got the 2, comma, negative 1. And then 3i minus 5j is going to be component form of 3, comma, negative 5. Now that you see it in component form, can you do the dot product? What are we multiplying? 2 times 3 plus negative 1 times negative 5. So we're going to have 6 plus 5, which is 11. Okay. Questions on dot product? Because notice, we've officially learned dot product. We're not going to be done with it now because we're going to use it in other pieces. For example, number two. Number two asks us to find, use the dot product to find the length of the vector u, which is 4, negative 3. Okay, guys, length. What do you remember about the length of a vector? Okay, so the length of a vector or magnitude was the absolute value. And up in property two, we had absolute value in there, didn't we? So that's what they're hinting at. They want us to use property two. So I'm going to write down property two. I'm going to reverse it, but I'm going to say it's the absolute value of u, quantity squared, equals u dot u. Okay, so right there, that is straight from property two. I didn't do anything fancy other than flip my left and right because that's the way I wanted to write it. Okay, so that is, I'll even write up here, this is property number two, if that helps you. Now, this property will give us the absolute value of u quantity squared. What is it that we need to find? Just the plain absolute value of u. So how are we going to find just the plain absolute value of u? We're going to take the square root, right? To get rid of that square, you're going to take the square root. So if we take the square root, it's going to be the absolute value of u equals 
the square root of u dot u, or the dot product of u times u. And we're given u, correct? Okay. So we're going to be doing the dot product there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write in. So it's the square root of, and u is given as 4, negative 3. So we're going to be doing the vector 4, negative 3 times 4, negative 3. Okay, how do I do that dot product under the radical there? Okay, first piece times first piece, so four times four plus second piece times second piece, negative three times negative three. Four times four is 16, negative three times negative three, 9, 16 plus 9, 25, and we're still under the radical, so the square root of 25 is 5. So the absolute value of u is equal to 5. And did we use the dot product there like it asked us to? Yeah, it asks us to use the dot product to find the length of the vector. Now, it wouldn't normally be such a big connection, but we kind of had a week-long break here from 6-1 to 6-2. So you might need to flip back to 6-1. So we just found the length of vector u, right? And we used the dot product. So we did the square root of the dot product of u times itself. How did we find the length of a vector back in lesson 6-1? Flip back and look. I'm just trying to make a connection because I want to see, I want to show you what we just did. What? Okay, so if we had two vectors, we did the distance formula, right? But what if we were just trying to find the length or magnitude of just one vector if it was already in component form? And there's two formulas there, right? Mm -hmm. One, The second one of which was more the distance formula when you're given the two ordered pairs. Yeah, so when we did the magnitude or length of a component, we did the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared, right? Which So basically we did the square root of the first component, p squared plus the second p squared. Okay, here we did the dot product of a vector times itself, right? But what did we basically do? 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. Even though officially it said to use the dot product, isn't that just kind of a roundabout way to get the same, the same way, get to the same thing? And that's why I was just trying to, you know, trying to help you guys recall that when we did length of a vector back in lesson 6.1, it was the square root of the first p squared plus second p squared, right? Well, we didn't write it as such, but that's basically what happened. So, just so you realize there. Okay. Next piece we're going to talk about is the angle between two vectors. So, if theta is the angle between the non-zero vectors u and v, then we have this formula. Cosine theta equals the dot product of u times v divided by the absolute value of u times the absolute value of v. And this formula is going to help me to find theta, which notice it says the angle between two vectors. So the idea is if this is vector u and that is vector v, then that formula finds the angle between them. So 
words, if we have component form of u and v, that formula will allow us to find the angle between them, which is what is represented by theta. It's a picture to help you understand what this formula is doing for you. And I hope you brought your calculators today because notice it's cosine theta we're going to be using, so that requires the use of a calculator most of the time. So let's look at example three. Find the angle between the vectors u and v. u is defined as 2 comma 3, v is defined as negative 2 comma 5. Okay, angle between the vectors. You got your formula up above, right? So I'm going to fill in that formula. And I'm going to take a couple of steps to do this the first time through. My formula says cosine theta equals. Got the easy part done. And on top, it's u dot v. So I'm not going to actually do the math yet. I'm just going to write out that u is 2 comma 3 dot v which is negative 2 comma 5. So that's what we're going to be doing on top here in a moment, is we're going to be doing the dot product between those two. Divided by, in the denominator, we're going to be doing the absolute value of each of the vectors. So it's going to be the absolute value of the vector 2 comma 3, and the absolute value of the vector negative 2 comma 5. You have the formula in your notes, so I'll blow this up a little bit so you can see what I'm writing. Okay, shall we try some math? Numerator. How do we multiply those vectors? Okay. 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times 5. She's using the dot product, correct? And if we go ahead and do that math, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3 times 5, 15. Negative 4 plus 15 is 11. So 11 is going to be my numerator of this lovely fraction. Okay, denominator. How do I do the absolute value of the vector 2 comma 3? Or in other words, how do I find the length or the magnitude of the absolute value or of the vector 2 comma 3? Okay, so yeah, we can go up and do the dot product of itself times itself, right? Or we can think back to the lesson 6.1 version, which is the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared, or there it's defined as v1 squared plus v2 squared, right? So they're doing the same thing. It doesn't matter to me what you think, because even if we do this as 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3, that's still doing... 2 squared plus 3 squared, isn't it? So I'm going to say the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. And what is 2 squared plus 3 squared? Thirteen. So it's the square root of thirteen times. We need the absolute value of the vector negative two five. So I'm going to be doing the square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared. 